I invited a friend over for dinner tonight. Ellen, my wife of 19 years, told me over breakfast, I met him at the gym, and I'll be spending a lot of time with him, so I want you to meet him. I don't want there to be any secrets between us, are you going to train together? I asked innocently. Well, in a way, I expect it'll be very bodily, it sounds like you wanna have sex with this guy. Does it? Well, yeah, she said, I found that no matter how much I love you and no matter how kind you are to me and you are very kind, I just need more than one man in my life. I was your loving faithful wife for 18 years, but lately, I've been feeling empty. Then I met Brian, and he filled me up. I discovered that he was my soulmate, I ignored the obvious double meaning. Wow, I didn't realize a person could have more than one soulmate does that mean I'm in the past? No, silly. You were my first and will always be my primary soulmate. I just need more, I'm trying to be upfront about it, and I hope you'll be polite about it, after all, it was for your sake that I invited him, I hope you find him as wonderful as I do and that you can be friends so I don't have to hide, I couldn't think of an appropriate response to that. I really tried, but I just couldn't, as far as I knew, she had never had any affairs before, I quietly got up and headed to work. She looked so smug. Like she had found the key to perfect happiness, I wasn't sure if I was going to have dinner at home or not. I didn't have much to do that day, but I finally sorted out my thoughts on how to disrupt her plans. I got home at the usual time and found the wonderful smells of a special dinner coming from the kitchen. Ellen heard me come in and called out from our bedroom. Dinner is almost ready. I'm getting dressed, Brian should be here any minute. Please pour him a drink and make him feel welcome. You bet, I shouted to her. Just then, Brian walked through the door. I was surprised that he didn't knock or ring the doorbell. He just walked in like it was his house. Hi, Bill. I'm Brian. He said, smugly extending his hand for me to shake, thanks for sharing your wife with me. I ignored his hand and looked him over from head to toe. He was young, trim, and quite handsome, but nothing extraordinary. Ellen will be right down, she asked me to offer you a drink. A scotch neat would be nice, I was glad to know you like a good single malt too. So he's been here before tasted not only my wife, but my booze as well. Well, then you know where it is, you can serve yourself and then come sit with me and we can get acquainted. He headed straight for the drinks bar, picked out a bottle of good liquor, and poured himself a generous glass, Ellen says you met at the gym. I ventured as he sat down. I was sitting in my favorite chair, or he would no doubt have taken it. Did she seduce you right away? or did she act cool for a while before she drew you in, he looked confused. Oh, we had coffee a couple of times and discovered we had a real connection, he said, and then one thing led to another. I'm really surprised, when she told me she invited one of her buddies over for dinner, I expected it to be Kevin, the fact that you're here is really unexpected, Kevin? No. I'm Brian. Yeah. I get it. Maybe Kevin was scared off by what she planted on him, I saw him at the doctor's office last week and seemed really upset. Brian looked very embarrassed, he took a big sip of whiskey. Just then, Ellen came down the stairs, she was dressed stunningly in a little red dress. Her hair was styled and her makeup was flawless, she had even pulled out some nice jewelry. I see you two have already met. She said glowing. She really did look like the cat that ate the canary. Yeah, I was just telling Brian that I saw Kevin at the doctor's office last week, and he was complaining about you giving him a social sore, I said cheerfully, like it was something completely normal in our lives. You what? She muttered. What are you talking about? Who the hell is Kevin? I've never passed on a social disease to anyone, come on. I said. You honestly told me about Brian. Didn't you tell him about your other victories, I said I was surprised he came tonight and not Kevin, but I think maybe the soreness made Kevin back off. But that arrogant jerk just barged into my house like he belonged here, did you really give him a key? Brian, don't pay any attention to Bill. 
he's just kidding around and yanking your chain, she said, looking at me intently, there's no Kevin. There's no sickness, and there's no one else, well, except for Bill. We don't really know if that's true. Do we? I said, and then turned to Brian, think about this. If my loving wife loses her head, betrays her husband, and cheats on him with a dumb dick from the gym, what makes you think she wouldn't lie and cheat on a random piece of ass like you, and if she hasn't spread at all around town yet, what makes you think she won't? After all, a cheating whore is a cheating whore. They both looked at me with wide open eyes, he full of surprise. She full of anger. She told me you're filling her up. My advice is to use one or even two condoms when you do that. Goodbye, bitch. Good luck, dumbass. With those words, I got up from my chair and walked out the front door. I'll send my son, I'm pretty sure he's mine, to pick up my stuff another time. As I walked out the door, I heard her trying to convince this asshole that everything I said wasn't true. I parked further down the street. I saw Brian leave about five minutes later. He was in a hurry and didn't look back. Too bad, that wonderful meal went to waste, Ellen will have something to eat for a week. I'll miss her cooking, 